Warning, in five seconds, you will experience anarchy. Can you step on it? It's getting late. I'm sorry, I'm so anxious. It's just tonight. We're gonna be okay. Just like always. Whoa. No, no. This can't be happening. No one's gonna help us tonight. On. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge. Shame. At the siren, all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 hours. All emergency services will be suspended. Your government thanks you for your participation. That was fast! Wow! Like many of you, I am very impressed with the quick turnaround for this sequel. Although I guess it makes sense, especially when you have such a low-budget horror film like this that you can do a quick turnaround on, uh, why not strike while the iron is hot? Now, as you might recall from my review of the first Purge film, I actually liked it quite a bit. Uh, I was surprised by how much I liked it, actually. Uh, and not only because I felt that it was very realistic and could actually happen, which was uh, largely what was so terrifying about it, but I really liked Ethan Hawke's performance in the film, and also Lena Headey. Uh, now, that's one of the things I, I have a concern about with the sequel, though. I think it was really important and crucial for that film to have, you know, really well-established, legit actors in it. Uh, I think it added a sense of credibility to the film, uh, and they did a very good job in it. Ethan Hawke was very good, as he should be. That's how he's built his career and continues to work. Uh, so I'm a little disappointed that they couldn't get somebody of the same caliber for the sequel. Uh, it's going back to that more generic casting that you see in every low-budget horror movie, and I think that's going to make it hard for this to stand out. Uh, you know, Jason Blum's films have you know, he's the producer of these series, you know, they have stood out to some degree because of he finds a, a name actor that, not, maybe not a name, but the people are familiar with. Just like in Insidious, you have Patrick Wilson and, uh, you know, and Rose Byrne. Again, you know, actors that seem a little bit uh, above this, so therefore you pay attention when they make this kind of movie. But how is this any different than, for instance, like the, you know, the Devil's Doom movie that just came out? Uh, and the slew of other, you know, forgettable horror films. So it's unfortunate, I think, that that starts to go and drift into that territory here. But I will say that I really like the fact that we're going to be exploring more of what happens during a purge. You know, of course, the action was contained uh, to just one house the first time around, which I think still made for an interesting story, and I think you can understand that from a budgetary uh, point of view. I mean, it's very cheap to just shoot in one house, uh, and it's, it's easy to do, it's a quick shoot, uh, it's very smart filmmaking, you know, from behind the cameras, from, the, from that perspective, because uh, it's just, it's lean and mean filmmaking. But here, obviously, they can have a little more money to play with so, that, so they can go out into the streets. So I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, what's going on elsewhere uh, during this, you know, 12 hours where all crime, including murder, is, al is allowed, and to see how different types of people deal with it, you know, from different walks of life. So I think that is definitely a great direction to take this sequel in. Uh, however, I have to say, I had some concerns even with the first film, but now even as we go into the second film, I do wonder about the, you know, the social responsibility of making a movie like this, because I do feel that it seems so likely to happen. And there are such anger issues these days, uh, you know, with the economy and, you know, you know the 99% versus the 1%, you know, Occupy Wall Street. I just feel there is a lot of anger. Uh, I think the internet does a lot to help, you know, drum it up, you know, and uh, fan the flames. And I just, I worry about maybe presenting this as, a, as, a, as an alternative or a, a way to do, handle things. I would hate to see any copycat crimes come off of this. I think that actually literally scares me about this film. And I think that it's a very fine line for the Purge franchise at this point to walk uh, from being believable enough that that partially makes it compelling to maybe stepping over the line into real world application. And then, as I said, being you know, irresponsible as a film. So I think that's really a question that I hope the filmmakers are asking themselves uh, because, you know, the anarchy happens. You know, we see all the riots. You know, there are some infamous riots in American history. 
uh, some horrible things that happened. Uh, you know, you've seen what happened, you know, even during the civil rights movement, uh, the horrible things that humanity can be capable of. Uh, and that's what, as I said, makes this so powerful. But at the same time, I hope it doesn't, um, you know, promote it or inspire it. So that's my thoughts on this. Uh, I'm almost a little nervous to even you know, promote the film because I do have my concerns about it. But as I said, I did like the first one and I liked the, um, the real world application of it. So what do you think of this? Are you, would you see this in theaters? Does it bother you there are, as in like a semi-name actor in the film? Or are you okay? Is the concept enough at this point? Write your thoughts down below and you can check out some more trailer reviews right now.